it is hump day. Wednesday. Here we are. Um, okay, so John, we we wanted to talk a little bit more about this concept of time because um, we're, we're stuck in some, sort of some, time travel. Something happened. Something happened that you and I stumbled into that probably folks did not even recognize yesterday. Yeah, we kind of geeked out a little bit after we wrapped up yesterday. We kind of got in the. Well, we, well, we we got we got a little bit. We did, and and it was funny. It was something that I prayed, that I didn't even plan in praying, but um, then we started talking about it, and we kind of we kind of went on the hunt yesterday, and I yeah, think, I think what we found is really very cool. very cool, but also really Lutheran at the same time. Yeah, really good. So should we reread Mark one yeah, to start? Yeah, I think that helps us. Go ahead. Set you go ahead and read. So now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So we've been talking the last day at the very least, and, and you're the one who kicked it off because of your sermon, and you started talking about Kairos and Kronos time. And at the end of yesterday's devotion, and you all can go back and look at it, it was long, but at the end of it, I was offering the prayer, and I said something about the gospel of your Kairos time or something. Yes. And then when we turned the camera off, I, I, I looked at John and I said, I don't know where that came from, but it occurs to me that Kronos time is law and Kairos time is gospel. So John, why don't you go ahead and just orient us once again to Kairos yeah. and Kronos time and to what law and gospel is all about. You want to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so here in this passage that we that we read from Mark when Jesus says the time is fulfilled the Greek word is kairos which means you know I've heard it described as in God's own good time um, I tend to describe it as the moments when God breaks in with promise presence and fulfillment into you know chronological history and the other word... It's God, God's time. Yeah. Kairos God, time. God's time. Yeah. And then on the other side is Kronos time, which is chronological time. It's the, you know, the ticking of the second hand that marks our minutes, our days, our months, our years. And I think it's important for people to understand when they're reading their translations of scripture, they're not saying Kairos or Kronos. It we, just says time. We have, yeah, it just says time. And we have to go back, whatever we're preaching or looking at it going... What is this time that they speak of? Exactly. We, so we go back to the Greek. Exactly. So go ahead. John. So we so when we read it, we we float back and forth between these things without really knowing it, unless you you know want to pull you out back. your handy dandy you know Greek, Greek lexicon Greek. Right. and and see all right this is the word they're using. It will just say time. Right. So you have these two things that we sort of dance in between, and and on the Lutheran hand of things. We're constantly dancing between law that tells us that we are graced, forgiven, and loved by God. We're always dancing between this movement of, as Luther calls it, simultaneously being saint and sinner. Right. So we're dancing between our sinfulness and our, our righteousness, and we're dancing between time as you know the passing of events and God breaking in so we've got these two sets of dualities dichotomies that we constantly dance between all the time yeah sometimes knowing it aware of it sometimes oftentimes not, not at all yeah and, and it was interesting because because we got talking yesterday because it really was just really pondering I think that Kronos time is law and Kairos time is gospel. 
I've never read that anywhere, but it just seemed to fit. And, and so I, I began to think about what time does to us. And, and certainly in our chronological time, there are good times and bad times, but we don't speak of the passing of time being a good thing. Our kids' childhoods go by too fast. Life goes by too fast. This day has been too long. You know, we always think about it in negative terms. And, and to be sure, um, what time does to us is it, it, it inevitably culminates in death. Yeah. No matter how we look at it, the seasons are the same way. You know, we get to a new spring and a new a new year, and things are are blooming and starting, and then we have summer, and you know, there's life, and we're doing things, and then we get to fall, and it's that steady decline into winter, and that death feel, and that that in so many ways, our body's getting more frail over the years. Um, Chronos time is law. We feel our humanness, um, our imperfection through it. Whereas Kairos time, God's time, is all about resurrection and life. And uh, John, I think it was in the video yesterday, uh, was it not that you brought up the Exodus? Yeah. And you brought up um, creation as well yeah and you, we were thinking about time in there so yeah and it was interesting once we kind of got off camera and got our books out and kind of poured over them we got nothing done other than this yesterday it, I tell you it was it, it was interesting <laughs> it was a, it was a total total spirit total moment. diversion yeah and so one of the things we ended up doing was going back into Genesis going back into the two creation stories that we have. There are three, depending on how you look at the right. prologue in John's Gospel. But in Genesis, you have, when God creates, one of the first things God does is sets up light and darkness, day and night. Another dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you know, it says, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. So God sets up time. And it's good. God declares the first day is very good. God declares every single day that God creates is good. And then you go into the garden. You go into the garden with Adam and Eve. Not a care in the world. No. And there's no conversation really at all about, you know, how, how long they've been living there, how long they will live there. There's this real sense that it will just go on for as long as it, as it should. As if they're living in God's time. Exactly. They're, you know, God. They haven't the care in the world. Their only job is to just be in this moment with God. And then they eat from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where death comes in. And it's at that moment where God says, you know, you will die. Exactly. You've eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the punishment for that is death where time shifts radically because of what humans have done to make it that we don't stand infinitely in God's time, but that our sin warps time into the yeah. moments we're walking towards death. And, and if you didn't just hear that from John, rewind the video and listen to that again. There's something about our sinfulness that you said warps time it shifts our, instead of living in God's time, we now live in chronological time. Yeah, there, there is that, I, I forget whose quote it was, of, you know, as soon as you're born, you're waiting to die. And that's wholly, that sentiment is wholly opposite, antithetical to what God wants. But that's what sin does to God's good creation of time and whether by prescription whether you look at that as well that's God's punishment coming out or whether you look at it from the standpoint of that is what our humanity does to time 
that we and 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 we spend so much of our time you know not confident in that grace and love and presence and forgiveness and mercy and everything else of God's time and so much in how long is this pandemic going to go on chronological time how long will we live as a divided nation chronological time how long will racial indifference and and hostility or whatever yeah. you want to call it how long will that go on how long has it been going on how long have we waited for something to come i mean right we 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 pass the time based on the bad yeah and, and really it's kind of funny when you when you start to look at it that way Jesus coming into the world takes on a very different meaning in that we're through his death, crucifixion, resurrection, what he does is bring us back to that space of always dwelling in God's time. I will be that, with you always to the end of the age. Exactly. Of getting us back to that original state that God always wanted. That that that's really one of the huge undercurrents of the resurrection, we get to go back into God's time right. permanently, whether we see it that way or not, whether right. whether our sinfulness still brings us back to chronological time to, you know, how long will this be over till this is over versus, oh my gosh, like we get to just spend the entirety of our life right. and and everything after with God. That's, I mean, that's kind of mind-blowing in a way. Which I think, you know, and I just thought of this, John, which, which gets us back into Mark when we talk about, now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time, and it is Kairos there. God's time. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. That, you know, Kairos time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is near. It is here. Yeah. You know, there's a, a really powerful yeah. right at the beginning of the gospel. And that sets the stage for everything else that comes. Yeah. yeah. It's just you know, this was a really fun rabbit hole to go down. Yeah, you, it really was. I never up, thought of it. Yeah, and you end up finding something really different than you know what you expected. It was it was fun to <laughs> kind of put on our you know detective hats and our mag wow. get our magnifying glass out and go. All right, what what is this? I think we I felt like we were back down at McMiniman's Tavern. Yeah, in Philadelphia, just needed having, a, beer a, having, and some having a couple of beers and and some books and like we go crazy on theology. Yeah, you know, felt like we were back in seminary again. It was really fun. There, yeah, you know. Good. I think I think the question for our listeners who maybe don't get as geeked out as we do about it is how are you living because god's peace is found i think in in his in living in his kairos time yeah god's peace is not found in chronos time yeah and and really trying to shift that lens know, knowing that god is going to do it with us and for us mm -hmm. but if we hearken back to we are living in god's time what does that change in our actions in our our, our discipleship how does that what limits does that take off of our thinking our doing our, our acting what does that do and how which it's really that's the fun stuff to yeah. just go all right let's you know if i go and i know that i'm working on god's time it's going to be good yeah yeah well and i guess i guess that that's the difference for people like these first disciples in this story uh, which, which is what you're alluding to, John, is how do they drop their nets and go? There's something about Jesus, as you said, there's something about this Jesus that draws them out of the day-in, day-out grind of throwing their nets in the ocean, mm -hmm. coming back in, getting the fish out, getting their nets set up for the next day, Trying to get their fish sold, trying to something about God's Kairos time 
that pulls them out of this. Yeah. It's just really great. Yeah. It's really great. Pray us out of here, John. Gracious God, you step into our history and you share with us good news. And the good news is that you're always present. We're always working in your time and you are always working for our benefit, for our blessings and for our abundance. Help us this day and every day to remember that we are in your good time. Let that drive our actions, our discipleship, our speaking, all that we do. Let, let that realization take down the I can't and I won't and I shouldn't of our life to realize that we are being called to live as your son calls us to. And that's a life without fear, a life without limits, a life without barriers. Help us to stay in that space. Help us to see your inbreaking anew each day because it's real and it's promised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will see you on Thursday. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.